This PS5 controller has one of those shapes that looks simple until you actually try to design something around it. If you've ever tried to model a stand, a mount, or a holder for something organic like this, you know it usually turns into a lot of guessing, test prints, and frustration. So today, instead of fighting with organic geometry, I'm going to use some technology to simplify the whole process. Welcome to Dave Rig Design. I'm Dave. Corraldi sent me their Otter Lite wireless scanner to play with, and I wanted to see if I could take a real world object like this controller and turn it into something I could work with in CAD. By the end of the video, we'll have scanned the controller, brought it into the Fusion 360, and built a custom stand for it. Along the way, I'll show you how the Otter Light works, and we'll see if it actually removes friction from the design process. Creality is positioning the Otter Light as a high resolution scanner, built as a mobile first device and a streamlined workflow, making it easy for anyone to get great results. Inside the box is a carrying case and a turntable. The turntable is pretty basic, but it's all you really need to scan small objects. The case has a few sections. On the top is a calibration plate. We'll look at that more later. Next is the manual, tracking stickers, and other accessories. The main section houses the scanner, but first let's get rid of all the plastic bags. The gray rectangle is the scanner itself. At a high level, the auto light works by giving your object a high-tech photo shoot in the dark. It projects an invisible infrared pattern onto the surface, then uses multiple cameras to watch how that pattern bends and wraps around the shape. From that, it can figure out depth and geometry with surprising precision. The multi-camera setup also lets it scan everything from small detailed parts to much larger objects smoothly, while also capturing full color at the same time. Creality rates the Otter Light at up to 0.05 millimeter accuracy, which is roughly the thickness of a human hair. The light bridge handle is what really unlocks the Otter Light as a go-anywhere scanner. It contains a 3,400 milliamp lithium battery that powers the scanner directly, so you're no longer tethered to a cable or a laptop. Once attached, you can pair it with your phone and scan completely wirelessly, which makes walking around larger objects or working in a remote location simple. Also in the case is a USB-C cable for when you need to attach to your laptop or your PC, and a small owl figurine Creality uses as a test object with their scanners. There are three different ways to use the Otter Lite wirelessly. You can pair it directly to your phone for full remote scanning, pair it to a computer while still being wireless if you're working at a desk, or pair it to a computer and use your phone as a remote monitor, which makes the most sense if you're working on a shop floor or scanning large objects. I'll walk through the process using my phone, but later connect to my laptop when scanning the PS5 controller. Once the Otter is powered on, the scanner hosts its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Over on your phone, connect to the hotspot, then open the Creality Scan app and wait a moment as the app and scanner connect. When the connection is made, the icon at the bottom left of the app will turn green. Now you can start a new scan and you're asked what kind of object you are scanning so the Otter knows how to configure itself. Your options are object, person, or face, along with small, medium, or large objects. Some of the options change based on the type of object you are selecting. Once you start scanning, the screen gives you a preview of what the scanner is seeing. The top left image is what the Otter sees in infrared. The image below is the full color image. To the left is a scale telling you how far away to hold the scanner that changes in real time. On the right is the point cloud that makes up the scan image. Pressing the start button starts the recording process, and as you move around the image, you can see the point cloud of the object being generated in the main view. You want to scan your object at multiple angles, as the scanner can only construct parts of the object it can see. While the owl gets scanned, I want to let you know about something I have in the works. I'm working on a digital guide that breaks down how I approach problem solving and build step by step. It's early days, but if that sounds like something that might interest you, there's a waitlist link in the description that you can sign up and get updates and early access when it gets released. When you have captured all the areas of the mesh, pressing the complete scan button stops the recording. Then you can start processing the scan directly on your phone. If you're scanning a big object, you may be prompted to transfer the file to a computer for processing. The owl scan only took about one minute to process on my phone, which is pretty reasonable. At this point, you have a point cloud, which is basically a more detailed version of all the points you saw while scanning. The scanner might have picked up some noise during the scanning process. It's a good idea to clean that up now before proceeding to the next step. Now you have some options on how you can turn the point cloud into a 3D mesh. Hole filling, 
will close any small gaps in the scan from points you may have not covered, and Closure will close any big holes like the bottom to make the mesh solid, which you need to do if you want to 3D print the object. There are also three file formats you can pick from. The color mapping process takes the color images that were captured during the scan and maps them onto the mesh. Now you have a complete scan of the object and you can either export the model or transfer the project to your computer to work on. When working on my laptop, I noticed the app was recommending the scanner should be calibrated, so I figured I'd give it a try. When calibrating, you have to use the supplied USB-C cord to connect the scanner to your computer. As soon as you plug in the scanner, it will connect to the app. To start, you scan the QR code on the back of the calibration plate so the scanner knows what kind of plate it's looking at. Then you just follow the instructions on the computer, moving the scanner to where it should be above the calibration plate. This was super easy. All I did is look at the computer screen and line up the gray box with the yellow one. I wasn't even looking at the scanner or the plate. It felt kind of like a game and once done, it gives you an accuracy rating. Mine was 97.4% and I had a strong urge to play again to beat my score. Okay, now let's scan the PS5 controller. Normally an object like this would be difficult to scan since it's just white and black with no texture, but I was pretty surprised how easy and quick the Otter was able to scan the full controller. I've scanned a PS4 controller using photogrammetry in the past, and even though it resulted in a more detailed mesh, the process is much more involved, and for most use cases, the extra detail isn't needed. I'll leave a link in the description to that video if you want to see the difference. Once you have a model of the controller, you could 3D print it, maybe in a silk PLA as a decorative piece, or maybe a flexible filament, so the next time you rage quit a game, you can throw in instead of the real controller, nothing gets broken but I'll be using the scan as a template to model the controller stand. I was looking on printables for something interesting to use as a starting point and found this amazing bust of Kratos from God of War modeled by Photosmith Studios and couldn't think of a better item to represent the PS5. I brought the bust into Fusion with the controller, but the default size of the bust was way too small, so I scaled the bust up two times and then positioned the controller to where it looked correct. Once in position, I modeled the cradle that could attach to the base. I drew some 2D and 3D sketches to wrap around the base and follow the contour of the controller. Then extruded and swept the splines to create the collar and one cradle arm. That arm was mirrored and then I created some splines from the bottom of the controller mesh. Those splines were used to create a surface of the middle of the controller and then extruded to create the middle beam connecting the two arms. I kind of rushed the CAD so the mesh was a bit sloppy resulting in some hard edges Fusion would have a hard time cleaning up. So I exported the mesh into Nomad Sculpt, where I smoothed everything out to give it a more organic look, like it was welded and forged metal. I thought I've added in a hammered metal texture, but didn't think it would really show up in the print, so just left it as is. Now everything went to print. All the parts are printed in PLA, but the cradle is using a bronze silk, the base is using a wood infused filament, and the bust is using a marble. The cradle just press fits onto the base, and the bust just sits on top. Creating an organic contoured mesh like this to follow the curves of the controller would have been very difficult with a lot of trial and error without an accurate mesh to model off of and the scanning part of the process took maybe 10 minutes total, including scanning and processing. For me, the Otterlate is generally impressive for the places that matter in real projects. The scanning quality is very good, the tracking is reliable, and the fact that it's fully wireless makes it easy to use in ways that other processes just aren't practical. The real strength here is how quickly you can go from a real object to a clean, usable reference you can have in CAD. I'm not fighting with setup, cables, long process times, and the resolution is high enough to design parts from. There are other scanning methods or higher end scanners that can capture more raw detail, but they usually come with much more setup time, significantly higher costs, or more overall overhead. For this kind of work where scanning is just one step in a bigger process, the Otter Lite really strikes a good balance between speed, accuracy, and convenience. I think a scanner like the Otter makes a lot of sense for makers, small businesses, educators, anyone that needs to digitize an object 
without this scanning process turning into a project on its own. So how would you use something like the Otter Lite uh, on your projects? Or do you have any questions on something I didn't cover in the video? Let me know in the comments below. Start your comment with the word Kratos so I know you made this far in the video. And if you found this video helpful, consider hitting that like button. It really helps out the channel. Also, if you want to support the channel, get some behind the scene footage and more in-depth chats on projects, uh, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching.